Hi, and welcome to Get Be 404, a series of 4 mini talks. We'll be covering fun things you might not know you could easily do with Gatsby. This first talk is about making use of Gatsby 4's new initialisms. Gatsby 4 is the latest version of the popular static site generator, although it's no longer just a static site generator. It recently introduced new rendering options, server-side rendering and deferred static generation, alongside the existing static site generation. SSG, what Gatsby has been known for, allows to build everything statically. SSR is about rendering pages on the server where you can access APIs or databases. DSG allows to build pages when the first visitor requests the page, then saves it for future visitors. These are solutions to real problems. Let's take a look at a few scenarios to see that. Here's the first scenario. You're currently using Gatsby 3 to build a large website. It has thousands of pages with a large blog and an extensive knowledge base. Like a good Jamstack developer, you built everything statically to serve the best performing site, and your web vital metrics are brag worthy. But it isn't without problems. The problem is your build takes too long every time there's a content or code change. Building a large size, a large site takes time. On a fresh build, this could take 15 minutes or more. So how do we fix this? Don't build everything up front. Any page that is not accessed often, like old blog posts, can make use of deferred static generation. Just add deferred true to your create pages call where it makes sense. Here's another cool idea. Use your analytics data to determine if a page is built with deferred static generation. For instance, you could say that pages with less than 100 views in the last month don't need to be built up front. Let's look at a second scenario that is also pretty common. Let's say that you built an online store with Gatsby backed by Shopify. When customers log into their account page, you render their past orders on the client using a client-side router. There's a problem to that again. The user experience is weird. Anytime someone refreshes the page, they see an empty page flashing before their orders display. It feels kind of broken. Now we have a solution to that. Render those pages on the server using server-side rendering. How would you do that? Well, what you need to do is to move your customer API logic to into get server data. And then just use the server data prop in your pages. You can also get rid of that custom router you've been maintaining. A third scenario could be a combination of scenario one and two an e-commerce site with a large block that needs to display dynamic data. The solution there is a combination of the three rendering methods, SSR, SSG, and DSG. Probably now what you're thinking is that there are so many concepts and modes and acronyms to learn. How are you supposed to know what to do? Just keep this strategy in mind. By default, build all your pages statically. This is SSG and what Gatsby has done all this time. If a page is not accessed often, let's say it has less than 100 views per month, defer building the page into the first visit. This is DSG and what makes your build quicker. If a page requires dynamic data or private information such as fetching, such as fetching user specific data via an API, render the page on the server. This is SSR, which gives you the freedom to prepare anything you need on a server. Also, as we saw, Gatsby makes it simple to opt into these features. You don't need to think too much about it. So to sum up, Gatsby 4 is still Gatsby, one of the best ways to build quick performant sites. Gatsby 4 now makes your builds more performant with DSG and enables you to build full app experiences with SSR. Also, it's worth mentioning that both Netlify and Gatsby Cloud support these new features today. To learn more, check out this recording of our team live testing the three rendering methods of Gatsby 4. That was making use of Gatsby 4's new initialisms. Thanks for your time. Don't be afraid to type your Gatsby projects. I'm just going to jump right in and start talking about TypeScript. Now, when it comes to TypeScript, 
People that usually try it end up sticking with it. People who aren't really fans of TypeScript but still need to support it end up using JS docs with their types. And people who haven't tried it don't really know what they're missing out on. Using types in a complex project has a number of benefits. One, your editor will yell at you if you do something wrong. It comes with smart autocomplete. It literally does all the typing for you. And new developers to your project, they can be onboarded with less headaches. Now, you might be thinking, but Nick, my project really isn't even that complex. It might not be complex now, but your project will grow, especially with new features, especially when you're using the features that come with Gatsby. You've got stuff like <clears throat> sourcing data from multiple locations, whether they be files or APIs. You're using a deep GraphQL API, and you might be generating pages using contextual data. Trust me, you'll be happy that you used you set up TypeScript before you started getting to any of that fun stuff. So the goal with this talk is to show you how to make your life easier using TypeScript with minimal effort. And we're going to try to keep it simple enough that even if you're not a fan of TypeScript, you still might consider it. And I'm not trying to convince you to use TypeScript everywhere in your project, only for the data queried in your pages and components. The best part about TypeScript is that it's actually really simple. You don't need to be a TypeScript developer to make use of types. So let's just get straight into the setup. Uh, the first step is going to be uh, installing GraphQL Code Generator and its plugins. Next, you're going to be adding a code gen config file. Make sure you check out the link for uh, for the confile fig set up specifically for Gatsby. And next, we're going to add a script that regenerates the types. And so to make use of all that, you're going to start Gatsby with npm run develop. And then once it's fully running, you're going to execute npm run gen. This will read your project's files and generate TypeScript types for your GraphQL queries. And this is how you will use the types in your project if you are still using the um, .js file format. And here is what it looks like when you're using the TypeScript file format. And if you make any updates or add new queries, you'd have to run npm run gen again, and it will regenerate all those types for you. And now your data is fully typed. So when you're using GraphQL data on your pages, you don't have to worry about anything. And if something might be null, don't worry about it. TypeScript is going to tell you to handle it correctly. And if you're not sure what's available, you can just use the autocomplete. So boom, there you have it. Quality life, quality of life improvements right out of the box. Make sure you check out the link so that you can see a sample project if you want to learn more. Gatsby is well known for its GraphQL data interface. If you want to write content in Markdown and convert it to HTML, you query the GraphQL API for it. If you want to fetch content from a content management system, like Prismic, you query the GraphQL API for it. If you want to generate responsive and performant images for your site, guess what? You can query the GraphQL API for it. Some developers see this as an unnecessarily complex system. Why can't I just read my Markdown files, a developer might ask. I can just import remark, open the file, and convert it with the process function. Others may ask, doesn't my content management system have a client library? 
All I need to do is install the library, create a client, and call get all to get all of my documents. And why can't Gatsby just give me a function to generate responsive images? Can I just use a get Gatsby image data function or something? These are all valid questions. Gatsby's GraphQL API is, in part, an approach to improve on what you may be used to when working with data. The GraphQL API normalizes what would typically be individual libraries you must learn. Gatsby and its plugins convert different APIs into one interface, GraphQL. GraphQL is self-documenting, so you can easily discover what is available. Just use the built-in Graphical Explorer and check a box next to each piece of data you need. Then test the query right in the Explorer. If it looks good, copy the query and use it in your app. It automatically optimizes data payloads so only the data you query is sent to the client. Gatsby's GraphQL API is one of Gatsby's most powerful features. It enables complex websites to connect data in a natural way. For example, you can use Gatsby source Stripe to fetch a list of products from your Stripe account. You can also use Gatsby source Prismic to fetch marketing content about the product directly from your content management system. Then you can use the GraphQL API to link the data together. This scenario would make sense when working with separate inventory and content teams. Your content management system only needs to save the ID of a product in order to make use of the latest product information. And because we're just linking two individual nodes with their own data, we can access the full data object for each of them. For example, if we want a fully responsive product image for a Stripe product that was uploaded to Prismic, we can just query for it using GraphQL in a single fluid API. Stripe and Prismic don't need special integrations to make this work. Instead, we can configure Gatsby to integrate the two. As you can imagine, creating relationships like this is not limited to just Stripe and Prismic. Graphs thrive at connecting data. When you're building complex sites and making use of multiple services, use Gatsby's GraphQL API to your advantage. Let the plugin ecosystem do most of the work for you and enhance it wherever needed. Gatsby's GraphQL API is more than just an alternative API. In essence, Gatsby's GraphQL API is a framework around your data. Using it can be broken down into three steps. First, you configure the API with data sources and transformer plugins. Next, you customize the graph to link content and compute derived data. And last, you query the API to gather content with built-in optimizations. This data framework is unique to Gatsby and what keeps me as a user. I don't need to learn how to use Remark to parse markdown files. I also don't need to learn how to use Sharp to resize images. And when I need to connect large pieces of separated data, there's an easy way to do it. Thinking of content as parts of a larger graph will reveal how powerful Gatsby really is. Try it. You might find it to be quite a friendly API. Hey everyone! Have you ever scrolled through Twitter and come across one of those fancy social media cards? You know, the one having the page title, the summary, the author's avatar. Oh, and on the really good ones, we even have dynamic data, like the numbers of likes or shares of a given article. While in front of those cool images, you might have got that extra strong feeling of jealousy when you realize that your site doesn't have that. Well, guess what? This talk is actually called To Generate Social Media Cards Images with React and Tailwind, or I'd like to call it How to Look Cool on Twitter and Impress People You Don't Even Know. With Gatsby, there's an easy way to generate these images at build time. The best part about it is that we can build it using anything that renders to the page. Want to use some CSS filters? Of course you can. How about FreeJS to render 3D mobile? Yeah, that would work too. And are you into using cap size to accurately render text? Or can you not use this? Or any other way to specific library you're into? As I said, getting this to work is simple. First, you want to create your card as a page template. Because it's just a Gatsby page, you can use any data from your content sources inside it. Next, style it the way you normally do with a regular page. Finally, we just have to add the open graph meta tags to our page and images will be generated using the Open Graph Images Gatsby plugin. That's it. Now, let's have a quick look at a demo. We'll rebuild the GitHub card, as you're probably already familiar with it. 
Okay, so first we want to create our page template and set up this basic boilerplate inside it, an empty component and an empty query. Now we'll work on the GraphQL query. In this project, we use Gatsby source GraphQL to query the GitHub GraphQL API. We use it to query the repository's information, like the names, the numbers of stars, the languages, and so on. Once we have all the data we need, we can template it in a React component. As mentioned in the talk title, we're going to use Tailwind to style our card to look like the real one from GitHub. To do so, we rely on Tailwind built in colors and scales, and because there's nothing noteworthy about that process, let's assume we're done with it and jump into our next step. Next step is to add meta tags for our new social image on our repository page template. Here, we're editing our page template to append the open graph image component with data that we're fetching again from Gatsby GraphQL API. Pretty straightforward. Awesome. So the last step is to actually get those images generated. To do so, we use the open graph images plugin again inside Gatsby node.js. First, we query again our repository's information. Then, for each repository found, we generate its page and related open graph images using the function provided by the plugin. That's it. Once in production, our website will now have the necessary meta tags configured properly. And once shared on Twitter or any social media, our beautiful card will get embedded. Awesome. Now that we know how to generate social media cards, I bet you'd like some inspiration and additional resources about it. So go check out prismic.link forward slash Gatsby 4x4. Sit, Jamstack, sit. Woof, woof. Good boy.